What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, I have your WWE Super Showdown 2019 preview and predictions for you guys. As you all know, we're going to take you through the entire card, letting you guys know about the feuds, what I think about the matches going in, you know, everything I think about, everything that is happening with the feuds going into the matches, who I think is going to win, and all that jazz in between. To be honest with you guys, I'm not that hyped for Super Showdown. I'm hyped for, you know, a couple things here and there, but, you know, this is more of a live event. It's not t nothing over the top special even though WWE is making you feel like it is a Wrestlemania quality pay-per-view you know we've seen things like this with the greatest Royal Rumble last year and the Super Showdown in Australia last year and wasn't their crown jewel or something like that too so we have another one of those WWE big live event deals with that being said guys there are some interesting matchups on this card that I'm actually kind of interested in you know see where they go and all of that but there are also some stuff on this card that is absolutely just mind-numbingly awful but we won't know about it unless I run through it and give you guys all of my thought so let's go ahead and get started Starting things off with a match that I literally could not give less of a damn about, guys. We have the three-on-one handicap match between Lars Sullivan, one of my least favorite talents in the world, taking on the Lucha House Party in Kalisto, Grim, Metalik, and Lince Dorado. And I do not care about this match. I think that Lars Sullivan will win here. I, I think this is a meaningless feud. Nobody cares about it. Lars Sullivan comes out to crickets. He's very boring. I don't care about him, but I'm going with him to win this matchup. Next up, guys, we have another matchup that I really do not give a crap about. It is Jan Strowman taking on Bobby Trashley. And this one, again, I am just not into it. I mean, hopefully, I mean, both men are super athletic and they're big freaks of nature. So that could call for an entertaining matchup. You know, hard hitting, much like Goldberg versus Lesnar at WrestleMania 33. If they give us something like that, you know, hard hitting, just crazy athleticism for both big guys, then it'll be a fun one. But if it's some long, just rest holds and, you know, really slow, lethargic matchup, it's going to be really awful to watch. And that's, I don't know, hopefully I'm wrong, but hopefully we get, you know, a good athletic matchup between the two. But I'm going to go with Braun Strowman here. He's just, I mean, both of these guys are just treading water at this point. Braun Strowman has been long gone now, guys. I mean, my God, they, they completely ruined the man, and I feel terrible for him. Super good talent, just not booked right at all, and it's super sad to see. But I'm going to go with Braun Strowman to beat Bobby Trashley. Next up, guys, we have the 50-man Battle Royal, and I honestly did not feel like getting all my jobber figures out for this, you know, Jinder Mahal, guys of that nature. I didn't feel like stringing them all out there, so I'm just going to give with my opinion on this. I hope they use this as an opportunity to debut Bray Wyatt, have Bray Wyatt come out finally, win this Battle Royal here, the 50-man Battle Royal. What a way to, you know, put himself above all other talent right now on Raw and SmackDown than to win this 50-man Battle Royal. You know, we haven't seen him in the ring with this new character just yet, so what a way, he, you know, there could be like, well, there's only 49 men, and then bam, lights go out. Here comes Bray Wyatt. I know that would be better for U.S. soil. It would like, it would be a lot better to do his debut in the ring in America, you know, with good fans and everybody cheering loud and popping for it. I still think it could call for a great moment, you know, have Bray Wyatt come out, you know, eliminate a bunch of guys, win the 50-man battle royal, and just what a way to debut that new character in the ring than to overcome 50 other men. Another thing I thought of, guys, is to have our truth in this battle royal and have like, have like 20 different guys become 24-7 champion. How cool would that be? You know, he keeps getting rolled up one, two, three. Like, there's a referee out there. They count one, two, three. And then that guy gets rolled up, and then that guy gets rolled up, and that guy gets rolled up. And you have, like, a train of 24-7 champions. I think that can be very entertaining. And if it's not R-Truth winning the Battle Royal or a debuting new Bray Wyatt, I would like for my boy Cedric Alexander to win the 50-man Battle Royal. So that is what I'm going with for that 50-man Battle Royal. R-Truth, Bray Wyatt, or my boy Cedric Alexander. Next up, guys, we are continuing a streak of matches that I really do not care for. Roman Reigns taking on Shane McMahon. Another feud and another matchup that I just am not invested in, guys. They have not given me a reason to care about this. I really do not care about it. I, I'm just sick of this Shane McMahon authority figure thing going on and then Roman Reigns. And I'm kind of glad that, you know, Roman Reigns isn't in the title picture, you know, straight away after coming back from his absence. But I still just am not invested in this. I don't care. I, I, I just don't, I want this feud to end. I want something fresh new and I think that the big dog will win here over Shane McMahon hopefully we get a good matchup out of him Shane McMahon very underrated in the ring so hopefully we get a good one out of it I'm going with the big dog to win and we may see Elias in this matchup possibly Drew McIntyre somebody getting involved 
Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we finally have a match that I care about. We have the Demon King, my boy Finn Balor, as the Demon, taking on Andrade Cien Almas in a matchup for the Intercontinental Championship. I think this matchup is going to be fantastic, possibly match of the night. I think this one and then Kofi Kingston versus Dolph Ziggler definitely have the potential for match of the night. But here we're going to see the Demon King. I'm excited to see what the Demon looks like. You know, another custom we get to get under our belts, most likely. I love anytime the Demon shows up, so it's going to be nice to see him defend the Intercontinental Championship here. And I think it's going to be a wonderful matchup, guys. I think we could get an NXT level type matchup. It's got a live event feel to it. So, you know, I think they're going to let them be more creative and fluid. They should let them be more creative in the ring. And I'm very excited to see what Cian Almas and the Demon King can do here. But I'm going to go with my boy Finn Balor retaining here. I just don't see him dropping the Intercontinental Championship as the Demon at this live event sort of atmosphere. It just wouldn't make sense to me. But I expect a really good, strong matchup out of both. And I think both men are going to leave looking very good. I'm very, very excited to see what the demon looks like. Maybe we'll get a new look. He's never won the same demon paint twice, so it's going to be cool to see what he breaks out here for the first time in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, but I'm going to go with my boy Finn Balor for the dub. Next up, guys, we have two of my favorite wrestlers of all time, Triple H taking on my boy Randy Orton here, and I think this is going to be great. I hope that we get, you know, sort of that classic matchup that we have had in years past. These guys have went at it multiple times in their career. A lot of history between the two here. I'm going to go with my man Randy Orton winning this thing. I think it would be the appropriateness. I think it would be very appropriate for Randy Orton to win, and I'm also going to be looking out for an Easter egg or a shot at AEW from Triple H. Please put something in his gear. Please put something in in his entrance. Please take a shot at AEW. Even though, you know, the crowd's not going to know what's going on or react to it or anything like that, I think it would be super awesome just to see Triple H do something in response to what Cody Rhodes did at AEW with his entrance at Double or Nothing. So, hopefully we get that. I doubt it, but I had a dream the other night that he did it, and I'm, I've been, you know, I've been thinking about it ever since this matchup was planned. I was like, oh snap, Triple H, is he going to respond first time in the ring since Double or Nothing? We shall see, but I'm going to go with Randy Orton picking up the dub and probably a classic slow burn matchup. Next up, guys, we have opposite ends of the spectrum here. We have my least favorite wrestler in the world, Trash Corbin, taking on one of my favorite wrestlers in the world, Seth Rollins, for the Universal Championship. And I totally rolled my eyes when Baron Corbin even became number one contender here because it's just like shaking my head, bro. Like, what does WWE see in this man? I literally do not understand it. He's not a good heel. He's not a good talent. Just get it out of my face. Get him off my television. But anyways, I'm going to go with Rollins to retain. We could possibly see a Brock cash in here, but I think... I think that's all. I think all of this smoke. I think all of this Seth Rollins stuff has been smoking mirrors. You know, he said he was cashing in, and then he wasn't, and then he was, and then he isn't, and then you know, bah, boom box Brock and Brock party. All this BS. I think this has all just been a ploy, guys. And you guys will see in the next segment what I'm talking about. I don't think we're gonna see Brock cash in here on Seth Rollins, but I do think that Seth Rollins will retain the Universal Championship over Trash Corbin. Next up, guys, we have the WWE Championship match between Kofi Kingston taking on my boy Dolph Ziggler. My man Ziggler comes back, attacks Kofi Kingston, and he is in a position for the WWE Championship, and it's, it's, it's so upsetting, guys, because I, I know I want to get my hopes up and be like, you know what, my boy Dolph Ziggler, he's in this position, thank God, you know, they're giving him a chance here, but no, guys, he's not going to win here. If he were to win, it would be an immediate cash-in by Brock Lesnar, but I don't think that he's going to win here. I think that this is just a stepping stone. They're using Dolph Ziggler. You know, he was away doing his comedy shows and stuff, and they were like, you know what, Dolph, come back so you can job out to Kofi so that we can make his title reign last a little longer. He doesn't have an opponent for Saudi Arabia, so we need you to come take this pin, and that's what my boy's gonna do here. It's very sad to see, but that is just the, the you know, the reality of the situation that we're dealing with here. Kofi Kingston will retain, but this has a definite possibility to be match of the night, guys. This and the Demon versus Cian Almas, I think both of these matchups are gonna be great, and I just want a good matchup. You know what? I, I want Dolph to put on a show, show what he's made of, even if he doesn't win, which I, I know he's not. You know, it's just not going to happen. I will completely mark the hell out if he does, but it's just not going to happen, guys. I just want a great matchup out of both, but do not be shocked if Brock Lesnar walks down this aisle, cashes in on Kofi Kingston, and walks out WWE Champion. That's something, that's a bold prediction right there, guys. That could easily happen there, and I'm just putting it out in the atmosphere that that is a definite possibility. Brock Lesnar cashing in on Kofi after you know, attacking Rollins and signaling to Rollins, I'm coming for Rollins, I'm coming for Rollins, to flip the script, just like Brock always does, you know, just shows up out of nowhere, he could become WWE Champion after a barn burner, a classic between these two men here, but I'm going with Kofi to retain. 
And last but not least, guys, we have our main event, which I do think will main event the show. Either this matchup or the match where Brock retains could be the WWE title, could be the Universal title. Either one of those matchups will main event, but I'm, I'm calling it to be this one. Undertaker taking on Goldberg. Fantasy matchup of sorts. You got the icon, you got the legend, you got the man, you got the phenom, you got all the good stuff going into this matchup. Two huge names, two old men, two people that shouldn't even be in a ring right now, even though both of them are in, you know, somewhat good shape. They still, I don't know if they can go in the ring. You know, Goldberg showed what he could do in 2017, but I just, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll have to see here. I know he looks fantastic. He's in good shape and all that jazz. Undertaker is in good shape as far as his body goes. I just don't know what he can do in the ring anymore, especially after what we've seen of him the last few years. But anyways, guys, getting into this matchup, I don't expect this thing to last very long at all. I would say this thing is going to last anywhere from two to five minutes. I don't see it lasting any longer than that. It could be possibly shorter than that between Goldberg and Undertaker. This is just a ploy to get some names on the card, you know, make the card and the pay-per-view seem bigger than it actually is, sell some extra tickets, all that good jazz. But I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with the Undertaker here. I think Undertaker is going to win, you know. I'm j I don't know why I want to go with Undertaker. I just feel that that's what's going to happen. Unless Goldberg, you know, was like, I'm not coming back unless I win. We'll just have to see, guys. I really don't care who wins. I'm just kind of interested to see how they book this matchup. But I'm going to go with the Phenom, the Undertaker, the legend himself. And we'll just see how it goes. But that pretty much does it for your WWE Super Showdown 2019 predictions and preview, guys. I would love to know your thoughts down below. Leave all of your predictions down below. Do you expect Brock Lesnar to cash in? Who do you think is going to win between Goldberg and Undertaker? Let me know down in the comments below, guys. Will my man Ziggler leave Saudi Arabia with a WWE Championship? Let me know down below, guys. But that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.